Hello, everybody. In one minute, we will start. Do you hear me? Okay, hello again. I want to start with, um, with the words, thank you to all these people who joined this good idea of AT's company, that together we are strong. And uh, I want to thank you, Miki, uh, to uh, help me to invite me in this team and I want to thank to our, all AT's team uh, for um, good products. I use your products, I like it. Your revolutionary team, thank you. Let's start. Uh, today we will talk about problem solving in endodontics and uh, few words about me. My name is Denis Podolchuk and I live in beautiful city Kyiv. It's the capital of Ukraine. Everybody welcome to Kyiv. I invite you, but only after coronavirus. Uh, and uh, I work in one clinic for 11 years. Uh, and uh, I work 10 years with microscope. And for these 10 years, I did more than 12,000 of fruits with microscope. I'm not endodontist because in Ukraine, officially, you can be an endodontist. By my practice, limited only to endodontics. And uh, before we will start talk about endo, I want you... Uh, to recommend read one book because I found very interesting idea. Uh, the Malcolm Gladwell is the author and journalist Canadian who wrote this book Outliers and uh, they did big research and they found that to be good professional, uh, professional uh, to be successful, to be good even in the dentist, yes, you need to work minimum for 10,000 hours. And if you are a young doctor and uh, you are now on start of your career, you need to understand that um, some problems with endodontic, with communication with patient uh, at the be beginning of uh, this long way, it's normally. And 10,000 rule, uh, 10,000 10, hours rule, it's also about uh, that you need to work minimum from six to 10 years uh, to, to get good result, average good result. To be a, a good average and the dentist, you need time, you need experience and uh, you need luck. Uh, let's talk about endodontic. And today my presentation will have a six block. And uh, the first one, I want to talk about diagnostic and my way. Uh, when I started to work in 2009, uh, I have a lot of problem with broken instruments. Uh, then also I have a lot of problem with uh, obturation. Yes, overfilling gaps inside the root filling material. But after a few years, uh, I already uh, had some collection of beautiful X-rays with lateral canals. 
And in that period of time, I thought that good endo, it's when I have beautiful obturation with lateral canals. Thank you, Style Italiana, yes? And uh, after that also, I did a lot of cases with microinvasive access to save uh, tissue of the tooth. And uh, on this, at that moment, I thought that I'm as cool as Castellucci because I have lateral canal, I have so beautiful X-rays. Uh, but after that, I met few of my recalls. And uh, uh, sometimes, um, oh, no, after that, I have all, had also cases with curved roots. And after that, I met some my, some my recalls, and these recalls, uh, most of them was normal, but sometimes it was like this case. Yes, it was only simple irreversible pulpitis. Yes, it was a palatal root. It's wide and simple root. Why this case failed? And I understood that, no, Dennis, you are not like Castellucci. You are a young doctor with some beautiful few cases, uh, but you need to learn more. And let's talk, uh, and let's talk about young dentists. If you choose endo, you should know that endo is easy. It's not easy. It's, uh, it's very not easy, it's, but it's very interesting. And uh, let's talk about diagnostic. The first case, patient came to our office with acute apical abscess. When I took this X-ray, my first thought was that Dennis, Maybe in tooth one, two, the pulp is necrotic and you should only do uh, non-surgical root canal treatment and everything will be okay. But before I uh, took my instruments, I decided, no, Dennis, you should uh, do cold test. And when I did cold test, uh, the tooth number one, two was vital. And I was surprised the tooth one too vital because in the apical area of this tooth, I had big lesion. And near the apical area of tooth one one, uh, there was some small uh, bone destruction. And okay, I decided to treat tooth number one one. And when I desobturate tooth one one, I get a lot of pus. And in this first visit, I obturated this tooth with calcium hydroxide and temporary adhesive restoration. And on the second visit, it was obturation with MTA material and uh, then H plus with gutta. And now I have recall on one year recall Sorry for this X-ray because I had problems with sensor on that time, but you can see bone healing. Yes, you can see bone healing near tooth one two. The next interesting case about diagnostic was about tooth twenty two, and the patient also came to our office with a pain. And uh, when I did this X-ray, I saw that the filling was short. And first my thought was, Dennis, you will obturate this good uh, well on all lands and every everything will be okay. But no, when I did examination, I saw some tooth abnormalities on palatal side of this root, of this teeth, tooth. And uh, it was here, yes. And it was a deep pocket until the apex of this tooth. And this tooth abnormalities has a name palatal groove. 
you can read the, about it more. It's not very often, but this groove can be one side of, or, or on both sides of the tooth, mesial and lingual. It can be short, like you see on the right one tooth, or in, it can be long for all lengths of the tooth. It looks like here, yes? And incidence rate, incidence rate of these tooth abnormalities, palatal groove was from 1%, uh, till 8%. Uh, as I know, in Chinese population, it's until 15%. And uh, to do right decision, treatment decision, you, you need to know this, all these abnormalities. And my uh, first conclusion that you need to have strict diagnostic protocol. In every case, you should use cold test in every case, you should use periodontal probing to, to prevent you from mistakes. If you will use periodontal probing, you will find a lot of vertical root fracture also. The next case, I love the next case. When I show this image on my uh, lectures, uh, almost everybody in the audience think that we will be talk about some upper tooth like, uh, like six or sevens. But no, this tooth number 27 was referred to me from another clinic and a dentist called me and said, Dennis, I have uh, problems with the anatomy of this tooth. I can't understand it. And when I started treatment of this tooth, I understood that I also have problem with the anatomy of this tooth because I found some, the location of orifice was some not standard. And I found some small, uh, small some small canal. You can see it's the right one. Yes. And I decided, Dennis, okay, uh, to do this uh, tooth right, you need more information. And we did combin computer tomography. On, on CBCT, you can see very interesting anatomy of this tooth. Uh, its tooth has one mesial root, yes, and one uh, distal uh, lingual and one buccal root. But on the buccal root, I found that small additional canal that, wa that was uh, inside the tooth. And after CBCT, I was sure that it's correct anatomy of this tooth. Yes, it's interesting anatomy, but it's correct. It's not perforation. And when I did shaping of this tooth, you can see that this lower tooth looks like upper one. Yes, it has something like MB1, MB2. I asked patient about replantation. No, uh, no, she didn't have any replantation procedure in the past. And also this one short root was located here. And then I did obturation and it's, you can see, final x-ray. Every time when I, has, I have not very simple case, I do um, recall with CBCT. And two years CBCT recall, everything looks well. The next case with interesting anatomy, it was tooth number 25. This patient was immigrated many years ago from uh, Ukraine to New York. He is dental technician and he came to Ukraine to treat his teeth. And uh, as you see, we, we have CBCT and as you see, the bone destruction, the lesion is not epically, it's laterally. And uh, I started to do endodontic retreatment. The first stage was uh, removal of metal post. The and the second stage after was shaping. I found wide lat lateral canal. 
And with thin instrument, I did some small instrument, gently instrumentation of this lateral canal, uh, only to be sure that it's clean and the irrigation solution can come into this small canal. And I did obturation. And we have recall of this case, it's pre-op. And one year recall, you can see here bone healing. The next case is one of my favorites because if Ukrainian dentist, if Ukrainian prostodontist decided to place uh, to uh, place post inside inside tooth, nothing will stop him, even red Russian cement. And uh, we, now we will talk about tooth number uh, 17, the last one, the lower one, yes, on this slice of CBCT. And uh, the prostodontist wanted to make space to place a post, but uh, because of Russian red cement, he, he missed a little bit and he did perforation. And then this patient came to our office to root canal treatment. And uh, this tooth was also interesting because on mesial wall of mesial buccal root, uh, it has bone destruction, some small lesion. You can see it here near blue line. And also this tooth was very interesting because usually this tooth has only one palatal root, but this one has two palatal roots, mesial and dis distal. And uh, in one of the buccal roots also was broken some old hand file. It's two palatal roots. I started to do endodontic retreatment and uh, with yellow dots, you can see the place where the prostodontist want to, wanted to place post. And with the green, green one dots, you can see uh, the real orifice of root canal system. And I removed broken file. And after that, I found one additional canal. And it, it canal was very interesting for me because it was very short, but um, I was the first doctor who found this canal because it was hiding under the dentin. And when I found it, it was already white and I easily shaped it, but it was very short and I can't understood why. And after that, I did obturation the additional canal is blue dot. After that, I did obturation um, of the canals with H plus with gutta percha, and uh, the perforation was obturated by MTA material. And on the final X ray, you can see this small material. This small, uh, sorry, this small canal uh, has end near this bone destruction, yes, near this lesion on mesial wall. It was very interesting anatomy for me. And also it was very interesting case. And my second conclusion that you need to search as more as possible canals in every new tooth. You should remember and know standard anatomy, but you should also remember that there can be more and more canals and they can be very curved, very sharp. The anatomy every time is interesting. That's why I love endo. The next, the next block of cases, we will speak about materials. Uh, this my successful case was treated, I think seven or, not, seven or, or nine years ago. It was, uh, necrotic pulp, it was epithelial periodontitis. And I obturated it with new material Resilon. It was some popular material at that time. And now I want to talk about this material. 
And uh, as you can see, it was very beautiful image with a, a lot of lateral canals, but successful end, it's successful outcomes, long-term outcomes. It's not about beautiful image. And on one year recall, we can see healing process. And the last recall of this case, I have, um, it's six year recall, everything looks good. But I have a lot of another cases with this new material. Uh, it was case, it was tooth number 27. It was, uh, I think, uh, 2010 or 11. And uh, I obturated this tooth because of irreversible pulpitis. And on three year recall, con beam computer tomography uh, showed me that this patient had some problems. It, it had uh, epical periodontitis on palatal root. And also uh, he, have, he had problems with sinusitis. Yes, it was connection, connected problem. If you want to read more information about um, uh, maxillary sinusitis of endodontic origin, about communication, about how to treat it, you should read this article on AAE webpage, American Association of Endodontists. And the correct name of this diagnosis was not epical periodontitis, was periapical osteoperiostitis. Yes, not easy. Uh, I asked my surgeon, this patient decided to not retreat tooth. He wanted to, uh, he wanted to extract, extract it. And I asked my surgeon to give me this palatal root uh, to evaluate my work. I wanted to know why this case failed. And uh, I did X-ray to uh, in two position to evaluate my obturation. It was not very good, but it was normal. Yes, it, it wasn't sharp, uh, it wasn't thin, but there are some gaps uh, inside the material. And after that, I split it this root and I found that this new revolutionary material become black in the coronal part and in the apical part of this root. Uh, usually it means micro leakage. And uh, I want to tell you a story about this material. Uh, it has a lot of different names. You, it's epiphany uh, or uh, real seal, epiphany or another one. Resilon, yes, Resilon. And uh, it was uh, revolutionary material because after obturation, sealer and filler creates monoblock inside the root and the root becomes stronger. Dealer said it to me. And uh, also this real seal material was first adhesive material uh, for root canal treatment. And a lot of Ukrainian dentists bought it because it's from USA. It's one new revolutionary material. And um, after that, I started to read articles. And um, I found only in 2016 an um, article about long-term clinical outcome of this new material. And in this article, they showed us that uh, the manufacturer did only three researches before they started to sell this material worldwide. And the uh, biggest recall late was only two years. They had only two years recall, uh, recall uh, time average uh, in this article. And uh, they, they started to sell this new material world, worldwide, yes? And in this article, they did uh, own research. 
they filled 50 teeth with gutta percha and 50 teeth with resilon material. All teeth was without apical periodontitis and procedural errors. And what they found that if you if they use gutta percha with average recall rate uh, six and six years uh, recall time, the average success rate was 88 percent. It's normal, but if they use Resilon, almost the same recall rate, uh, recall time, the average success rate was only 56%. It means that every second tooth that they did in past with this new revolutionary material failed. And my next conclusion, that you should believe only in evidence-based dentistry. And if you have some new material, you need to wait until good long-term um, articles will be published. And only then start use it, uh, this material on your own patients. And um, the next block, will be about also interesting anatomy. This tooth number one six was well obturated uh, four or five years ago in some good Ukrainian dental clinic. And first thought that I had when I saw that this tooth has apical periodontitis, you can see lesion on mesial buccal root, that maybe they missed MB2 canal. But no, they found MB2 canal. Also on CBCT, I found that this tooth has lesion in furcational area, not only apical. And, uh, but the uh, good news was that this furcational bone destruction uh, didn't have any connection with oral cavity. Uh, and I decided to retreat this tooth. You can see that MB2 was well obturated. Uh, the previous doctor, doctor also used uh, H plus with gutta percha. And when I removed all restorative material, I found that between MB1 and MB2 uh, canal, there are isthmus. And this isthmus was with all infected tissues. And my thoughts was the reason why this fa case failed. It was this isthmus, uncleaned isthmus with infected tissue. And I cleaned it. Yes, it's this part of root. And then I did obturation. The second case like, like this, was tooth number 26. Uh, the prosthodontist decided to change uh, a crown because of cavity under the old one. And uh, we decided to do root canal retreatment. And uh, I did shaping. Check that every root is clean of old filling material. And then when I looked again on microscope, I want to show you that uh, even if you found MB2, it's not a guarantee that you will have successful treatment. Even you found, will find MB3, it's also, this tooth can have problems because even after instrumentation on um, MB3 canal, you can see that there are some small isthmus with infected tissue with old uh, film material. And only after my work with ultrasonic tip, it's, it was U-file uh, and on and the chuck, uh, only after that, this isthmus was clear. And if you are a young doctor, you should, you can, you, you should know that uh, this uh, tip is 
sometimes can broke and uh, but if you have microscope it's easy to remove it yes and oft, only after that this uh, root was clean before and after obturation and uh, you should know that in mb root this isthmus is is up to 80% in the middle third of the root. Almost every root has this isthmuses. And you should be careful when you treat this teeth. Also tooth number 47, it was C-shaped tooth. Previous treatment was old. And I cleaned root canal system. Uh, I, in this case, I used also ultrasonic and uh, long neck burr. burr. And before and after. And my conclusion is that you should remember that most of the cases, most of the canals, not, uh, not round, it's oval. And roots are often oval with a lot of isthmuses. And you should use every new technology and device to clean it better. In this case, even you don't have long-term evidence that this device will increase your outcome. But you can feel with, uh, you can see with your eyes that root will be cleaner than before. The next case is interesting. It was endoperio case. Tooth 1, 1 it, it, and tooth 41. It's the same patient. And uh, the first stage was scaling root planing and endodontic treatment. And after three months, we did guided tissue regeneration with BIOS material and MDO game. And you can see it's one year recall. It was 2015 year and it was one year recall. A patient didn't have any complaints and everything looks good. And also there wasn't any deep pockets. After that, we did aesthetic rehabilitation. And the last recall of this case, it's 2019. It's almost six year, uh, five year recall. And uh, it's very interesting case. Yes, you can see on the left, X-ray that uh, there are some maybe pocket measles to 211, but these teeth are in function for five years more. When I saw the, that X-ray first time, I thought that the, that we need only to extract these teeth. The next case is also interesting. It's uh, it was girl eight year old. And they came to our clinic after uh, two other different clinics and they tried to treat this case. We will speak about tooth number 21. And uh, as, as the parents told me that um, the previous doctor wanted to do, to do some procedure like apexogenesis, then she, he, want, he or she wanted to do apexification, but everything was failed. And uh, he said to them that, okay, uh, I think that you should uh, extract this tooth but because I don't know what to do. And uh, we decided to do revascularization or revitalization procedure and uh, it's photo. You can see that this tooth is darker. And also the temporary restorative mater material was, the was with the leakage. The first visit, 
I did irrigation, only irrigation with sodium hypochlorite. And then I obturated this tooth with three mixed paste. It's triple antibiotic paste. Yes, did, I did uh, adhesive temporary restoration. Then I did this X-ray to check. This was my temporary restoration, like Didier Dici. Yes, I'm only endodontist. You should remember that. And the next visit, after uh, two or three weeks, I induced bleeding from the bone in apical part of this short root. And uh, then I placed MTA over the blood clot. And then I did a uh, temporary adhesive restoration. Yes, uh, the first portion of, F of MTA had bad adaptation because it placed over the blood clot and it very soft, but it's okay. It's only not very beautiful X-ray. And uh, on two year recall, you can see that Everything is good, freshly new bond uh, formation. And the last recall that I have, it was a four year recall. And uh, the first problem that they had some problem with hygiene. And I said, they uh, usually they uh, use another dental office than mine, uh, only for treatment of this one. Uh, tooth they come to our office and only for a checkup and I told to them also that they need to change my temporary restoration it was temporary restoration and four year recall looks like this and you can see that it's uh, not regeneration it's looks like repair yes because new uh, freshly formed bone in grow the root it's not like pulp uh, pulp like tissue it's bone inside but it's successful this case if you want to read more about revitalization uh, you should read this article it's guide or uh, in two days, I think, uh, Dr. Henry Kim will uh, also give uh, some presentation about revascularization, sorry, and intentional replantation. And conclusion number five, that you should be conservative in uh, feeling material choosement, but you should try uh, every treat and, uh, treatment possibilities to save the tooth because nowadays tooth better than implant. You should read articles, more articles about that. And the last block will be about failure and problems during the treatment. It was uh, my first epical surgery in my life. And before that, I read a lot of book, books I, uh, about epical surgery. I saw uh, a lot of videos. Uh, I wasn't hands-on, but nobody told me about complications that I had in my first epical surgery in life. When I did retro preparation, I pulled out the metal post with the chrome. And on final X-ray, after, after epical surgery, you can see gap between uh, root and between post, yes? And when I did this X-ray, I was very surprised. Uh, I took this tooth with my hands. <laughs> I took this crown out. I said to my patient, oh, okay, it's cool that we can additionally irrigate your um, canal. Uh, and uh, I did irrigation. 
and uh, then I fix this crown and post back. The last recall of this case was five year recall, and you can see on CBCT that everything looks normally. But after one year, it was a six year recall, patient came to our office with a pain, and we found vertical root fracture in this tooth. And yes, you can see that this tooth uh, hadn't feral effect, but six year. The next case with complication, it was tooth number 35 and uh, it was freshly made bridge and uh, this patient had irreversible pulpitis of tooth number 35. And I did some small hole to do root canal treatment and it was uh, Friday evening and I did it, it easy case, yes. And I treated this patient with the thought that in one hour I will drink beer in pub with my friends and have good time. But before operation, I found some small dot on the wall. And uh, my first thought was, okay, the second canal in these roots it can be. And I took long neck burr uh, to do better access inside root canal system. And uh, I drilled and I didn't find any additional canal. Okay, let's operate one canal. It was some dot on the wall. And uh, when I started to uh, dry this canal. Uh, the working lens was something like 21 millimeter and I put paper pin inside the root and uh, it stands for four millimeter, four or three millimeter shorter than working lens. Okay, I will do X-ray to understand uh, why. I did x-ray and uh, it was the first one and the second one uh, of, was this. I did x-ray and I found that the head, the round head of my long neck burr broke and fell into the root, in the apical part of this root. And that moment I was very crazy. And uh, then I decided to remove it. Uh, this, um, this place of burr is looks like you can see it uh, on the image. It's from another my successful case. And uh, I tried to remove it. Uh, at, on first stage, I bypassed it. It was easily. When I bypassed it, with hand instruments, I did. I decided that I can uh, use uh, my ultrasonic and touch hand instruments with uh, some small movement back and forward, and maybe I will remove this broken uh, head of this burr. But no, uh, I broke the hand, the tip of this hand files. Yes, you, you can see the steep in apical part in almost in apical foramen of this tooth. And in, in that moment of time, I was very angry. Um, and I wanted to run out from the clinic and wanted to go live abroad to some island without any dentist <laughs> and, to, and to become surfer, yes? Uh, okay, I decided to, to obturate this tooth because, okay, Dennis, you broke uh, two instruments in uh, root canal system, but uh, this tooth has good prognosis because it was non-infected case, yes, uh, in the apical third of teeth with irreversible pulpitis, usually there are no bacteria, and I decided to obturate it. Uh, I took 
uh, good aperture point. And when I put inside the root, I accidentally put this round tip of burr more epically. And uh, when my hand stopped shaking, I decided to finish this case. And after one hour, I removed this round uh, piece of burr and obturated this and finished this cases, case and obturated it. And you can see or know uh, the piece of my hands in hand instrument, yes? But the prognosis was good. And uh, the last recall of this case that I have it's six year recall. And my last conclusion for you that shit happens and you will meet a lot of hard cases, bad days is with a lot of complication. Sometimes you will meet not, good, not very good people, but you need to find strength and to manage it in the best way that you can. If you want to see more of my cases, please like this perforating internal resorption that I did with MTA all root. You can join my Instagram account. If you have any questions, please welcome. Uh, also, you can connect with me with my Facebook account or phone number on email. Thank you, everybody, and it's time for questions. Uh, how do you shape canal, C canal, it means C shaped canal uh, or isthmus without doing perforation or ledge any devices? Uh, usually I use um, ultrasonic in the deep part of the tooth. And in the coronal part of the tooth, usually I use the smallest long neck burr. Yes, uh, sometimes I, uh, I can do some perforation, but it's very rare cases. Yes, and uh, to do every case correctly, every hard case correctly, uh, home beam computer tomography will help you because you can know where this danger zones where you can use your ultrasonic or, or long neck burr or no. Also, uh, I use um, um, finisher, XP finisher. It's uh, from race. Also, it's helped me, but I use it in the situation when I can see this, um, I, I can see some deep parts of the root. Uh, what are the conditions requ required to make revascularization? Um, Once I read article from uh, some guys from India and they made a lot of cases of revascularization, not with MTA, with, with glass yonomer cement, with, without using of, of rubber isolation. And they showed me that even in so bad condition, you will have a lot of successful cases of revascularization. And um, you should believe in body, <laughs> yes? And give, uh, give your immune system or patient immune system a chance. Uh, if you uh, read this uh, article on uh, web page of European Society of Endodontology, 
there will uh, give it will give you a lot of information in what cases you can use it uh, and uh, to get a get good result but there are some articles now in joy uh, or, or in international endodontic journal that they uh, some some doctors did reverse revascularization uh, in adult patient and it also was successful. But, and I think that it's interesting procedure that we should use more and more in our practice. Uh, there was some question about tapers. Uh, as I understood, it was taper about um, on taper of my instruments. Usually I use a taper 02 or 04 and taper, no, usually 04 and taper uh, 06. It's only uh, additional instrument in my instrumentation protocol to shape coronal part of the uh, root. I never finished cases like 3506 taper because taper number number six it's uh, really reduce uh, a lot of coronal uh, dentin that we need to save which material best for anterior teeth restoration uh, sorry, but uh, my restoration is not very good. It's all, I do only temporary restoration because my practice is limited for, uh, to endo. Uh, case with with a little girl to 21, big apical resorption. Uh, why did you put MT deeper? Um, as I understood, it's revascularization case. It, it wasn't apical plug. I left space in root for tissue that will grow inside a root. It's not apical plaque, it's revascularization, it's different treatment. How to understand that you need to stop search additional canals? Uh, very good questions. And uh, usually when I start any case, I, uh, I should remember standard anatomy, yes? Like upper uh, tooth or lower tooth number um, six, yes? Uh, what we can have in lower tooth number six? Every time I would search for, I will search for uh, mesial lingual, mesial buccal and uh, middle mesial, yes, three mesial uh, canals, and usually I will, will search for two distal, yes, it's standard anatomy of uh, lower tooth, it can have uh, five fruits, yes, if I see some isthmuses, I will search for additional root, if I see some red dots, I will search for additional roots, if I see uh, some image on X-ray um, that will give me information on, that the root can be there, I will search for additional roots. You need to know standard anatomy, but maximum uh, with maximum canals. Yes, it can be. Uh, you need to know that the minimum uh, it's one. Yes. But the maximum, usually you need to search about uh, five or six canals in molar tooth. But when you see that you can, that uh, you don't see uh, anything additional, additional anatomy, red dots. And uh, when you see that the time of your visit is finishing, yes, you can stop, search it and do obturation. 
advices for a more successful endo. Uh, you should read a lot of articles. Uh, you should have strict protocol, diagnostic protocol, and you should uh, every time use materials with good long-term outcome. All materials with a lot of uh, researches, a lot of articles. Uh, how do you clean triple paste from kennel, from the kennel? Um, triple paste, it's temporary obturation material that I used in revascularization. On the second visit, uh, in that case, I used sodium hypochlorite again, and the end of revascularization procedure, every time you should use ADTA uh, because in uh, dentine wall, there are uh, grown factors and ADTA help to release these grown factors inside the canal and it will maybe, it will uh, increase the success of revascularization and uh, remove triple antibiotic paste. It's easily from root. It's not like calcium hydroxide. How do I manage internal resorption in last um, case about Instagram? Uh, the first visit uh, I did instrumentation and there was a lot of bleeding, yes? And the first visit I finished with uh, calcium hydroxide. And after second visit, uh, after two weeks was the second visit. And I used curved instruments to clean this white area inside uh, this resorption area. Also, it's very good to use XP finisher uh, instrument in cases like this. And after that, I wait, uh, uh, wait a little bit because uh, also was bleeding. And after that, irrigation with sterile water and uh, obturation all the root with the MTA with microscope. When, uh, when you induce bleeding for revascularization, how do you stop it before putting MT inside the kennel? Um, uh, I induce bleeding and wait, only wait. It's, for me, it's hardest in endo, only wait and do nothing, yes? And if you wait for five minutes, usually the bleeding stops and uh, you will remove some amount of blood clot uh, that you don't need and it's all. In such situation, over searching the additional canals will not make the tooth high to be compromised uh, and things in advance. Yes, uh, when you when you looking for additional uh, root canals, you can remove a lot of additional uh, tooth structure, uh, but with microscope with the knowledge of good anatomy and the small long neck burrs uh, ultrasonic tips. For me, it's better to find all, uh, uh, all canals and to clean good uh, root canal system. It's for me more important than to leave good teeth structure because um, um, if you work in normal way, not like uh, big bursts, uh, usually to you 
uh, you will not weaken uh, tooth very hard. Uh, that's why uh, it's important to find those roots. Uh, if you uh, if you feel that you could make some problems, you 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 need to stop at, at that moment. Every time when I feel that Dennis. Uh, yeah, you can make perforation, you can uh, go wrong way. Every time I stop, every time you could uh, do X-ray additionally, every time you can do Convim CBCT to understand um, does this tooth have additional canal or not. But sometimes on CBCT, I don't see MB2 canal but when I start to search it, I find it. That's why CBCT only helps you to navigate inside uh, two structures. I use only H plus sealer. And uh, a little bit about more sealers um, and the new material. And in this period of time, I think that bioceramics, it's a very new material that um, have not enough long-term evidence. And I read some articles, scientific articles, that uh, this material has high solubility. And uh, nowadays I use only MTA and I want to wait for a few, few years more to see long-term outcome evidence about uh, bioceramic sealer and uh, paste uh, for perforation to know that I can use it. Uh, nowadays, I think that it's not very, um, that it's new material, okay? What do you prefer, post or endochrome and why? Uh, Sarah, sorry, but I do only endodontic treatment and after that, uh, our prostodontist or restorative dentist do, uh, do such treatment that you wanted to speak about. What system of obturation do you usually use? Uh, the, most, uh, the most percent of cases I uh, do with continuous wave obturation technique because it's very predictable, it's easy and it's fast. But uh, as an endodontist uh, and or as a good doctor, uh, you need uh, to have skills to make lateral condensation or compaction because um, sometimes uh, some uh, your obturation units uh, unit can broke and you need to finish endodontic treatment and then I will start uh, then I will finish endodontic treatment with lateral compaction. Sometimes uh, it's easy to use only squirt, squirt, yes, squirt technology by uh, with hot obturation. And uh, I showed you case, uh, C-shaped case. And in that case, I used only injection. Um, and if you want to know uh, what about obturation devices that I use um, today, uh, I want to thank, uh, say thank you to AT's company <laughs> because I use uh, almost all my devices is from AT's company. It's motor, it's uh, Apex locator, and it's good devices. My microscopes is Car Carl Caps, it, it, and it's very good. And I work with this microscope for ten years, and it's great. Uh, it's great microscope. Uh, okay. Uh, 
one more. Uh, if if uh, internal or epical resorption cases, is there any ch uh, challenge in determining working lens? Uh, in case like I showed you previously, this case, yes, uh, this perforation was, uh, this resorption was perforating, yes? And that's why my apex locator uh, showed me wrong working lens. And uh, in this case, I used only X-ray uh, to understand the working lens. Uh, if I have um, closed internal resorption, there are no problems. If I have um, epical resorption, usually uh, I prefer to fill these cases a little bit shortly uh, because these cases usually have a very wide root canal uh, and epical con they don't have epical constriction. And uh, as you see in my another case, one moment, uh, after uh, even after successful root canal treatment, uh, the resorption process uh, can continue for some time. And in these cases, you can see that before and after uh, on 211, we have resorption after obturation. But it's okay because I used MTA material and because uh, I have healing. Okay, thank you everybody. Uh, thank you AT's company. Uh, if you have uh, any additional questions, please contact me. Uh, bye. Bye and uh, be safe and healthy. How to stop it? How to stop it? Okay.